Hello everyone and welcome to this, the 70th, I can't believe they've had us on for this long, edition of the Modern Woodworkers Association online discussion about all things woodworking. Today's special guest is Carly Eisenberg, but before we get to her, let me introduce our usual panel of suspects. I'm Tom Iovino of Tom'sWorkbench.com and I'll be your host of the program. Joining me from icy Atlanta, Georgia is Chris. How you doing, Chris? <laughs> I'm good, Tom. We're uh, we're having a bit of a struggle tonight because I uh, I stayed in the office a little too late and uh, haven't made it home. So we're we're kind of improvising, but uh, I'm doing good otherwise. Yeah, that's part of the reason why the audio quality is going to be like really bad. The guest is awesome, but <laughs> as like everything else in our show, the three hosts really leave a lot to be desired. And tonight, the audio will leave somebody to be desired as well. So. So the guest is awesome. It. Everything else is just going to be like a nosedive right into the ground. <laughs> so so I, see, I see Atlanta. You stayed too late. Now you're just totally hosed. I'm sorry, Chris. It's the way yep. it works. You, you know, got it. It's, it's winter in Atlanta these days. And uh, joining us from snowy and I believe somehow sub-zero uh, Long Island, New York, we've got Diami Palaki. Diami, how you doing? I'm doing well, Tom. It was actually above freezing today. For the first time since when? August? Uh, Mid-February. Mid-February? Okay, good. I'm glad to hear that. By the way, I'm in my 77 and a half degree uh, shop here today. And you know I'm what? You say that to make us jealous. It no, shouldn't be 77 here. degrees on March 3rd. It's just not right. Oh, well, when you live in the Tampa Bay area, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Okay, so uh, since we know Chris isn't in his shop, Chris, what is actually at your shop? Uh, let's see. Uh, so my wife... Um, my wife comes up to me the other day and she says, hey, uh, my friend Becky, uh, a lady that she teaches with, she says, she's coming to your shop this weekend to use your table saw. <laughs> okay. Sorry. What does they, that they mean? Aware, so, they, 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 they are aware that like table saws can remove fingers. Yeah. So, so her, okay. so her friend <laughs> Becky shows up and, and, uh, and she had, she had some oak hardwood flooring that she had two little cabinets that she wanted to make countertops with this flooring and she had already kind of glued it up and uh, it, it was a project but we, we basically put a substrate on the bottom of it, banded the whole thing, cut it all down and uh, I don't know, it, it turned out kind of neat. It's different. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it is kind of fun. Was it pre-finished flooring? No, it wasn't pre-finished. Um, it was sand in place. So, uh, so you know, we did. Uh, she had already glued it up. Done a pretty good job of getting it flat and glued up. But I wanted to put something on the bottom just to kind of hold it a little more together. And then it needed to be, you know, banded once it was all together. So, uh, and then we, you know, put a. She wanted a light stain on it, so we ended up, which I'm not a fan of, but we did that and put an oil finish a light, on it. A it light stain on the oak. Was she trying to like bring the oak? almost like bleach it or just darken it only a little bit? She just wanted to darken it a little bit. Okay. Just put a little color to it. So uh turned out pretty neat. I'll um I need to grab a picture of it and she said she was going to be put in place on her it was for her sister's house. So uh so she's supposed to take a picture of it and send it to me. So I'll post so it when she does. We'll be expecting that sometime cool. in the next what, six or seven years? Six, seven, eight years, maybe. Yeah, somewhere around there. Okay, good. I'm, so, I'm glad to see right around the turn of the so next that was, decade. That that was my unexpected uh, weekend woodworking project. That uh, it was on the fly. Hey, hey there's nothing wrong with that. It's time in the shop. Yeah, man. What about you guys, hey, hey. Jamie? Well, uh, it's been a while. So let's. I I uh, went to the woodworking shows. I think it was last weekend. It might have been the weekend before. Um mm -hmm. and. That was a great time. Spent some time hanging out with uh, Andy Chidwick and uh, and Chuck Bender. We talked about Tom yeah. doing the um, Stevie Wonder impersonation. Um, it was yes. a really nice time, and I, I I was talking to Wilbur Pan there, and he it was his idea. I got to give him all the credit. He told me to take the kids over to the Mid Atlantic Turners, so I was there with with two of my three sons, and they both got to make pens. So now my six-year-old and my nine-year-old have more experience on a lathe than I do, and <laughs> they were both really, really happy and, to do it and really excited. And Wesley, in particular, my six-year-old, was just he—he he did more <laughs> turning than Stephen did. 
Um, he Stephen was all hand over hand with an experienced guy. Wesley just kind of grabbed the the tool and, and went to it and did a great job. So that was just really exciting to see them make the pens and really enjoy it. Um, nice. Actually, in the shop, I've been kicking around this trophy I have to make my friend Dave since uh, it's probably almost a year, and. I've finally done a bit of work on it, done some prototyping, so I threw a picture in the show notes. What we're going to do is a traditional trophy stand, which is three tiers, and I'm going to use um, beer bottles painted gold to make them as tacky as possible as the pillars, and I'm going to make little triangle shelves out of probably walnut, though I was just toying with maybe doing it out of purple heart, because I have some purple heart kicking around. Um, and on the very top is the mug from the tavern where he plays fantasy football. So this is going to be their fantasy football trophy. That'll be the next actual project going on in the shop. And um, I was apparently really pissing people off on Twitter with this last week, so I figure I should uh, memorialize it here in the podcast, is last weekend, last Thursday and Friday, I saw both Slater Kenny shows, and everyone should have. That was a fantastic concert. There, there, there we go. Just, just back to a moment. This, this yes, fantasy John. football thing. I understand, uh-huh. you know, the whole concept. But people used to laugh at me in high school for playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and now it's like this is like D and D for jocks. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's like all the, all the charm of double, you know, of like, you know, of, 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 of long form statistics and, and bookkeeping. And I, you know, I, I just, I just can't get into it. Maybe it's just I moved on to woodworking. Well, I don't. Know, I. But, you guys party on, man. Party I on share your lack do. of getting into it. I don't. I don't follow it really any sports myself except for rallying. But um, it's an opportunity to build a trophy. So why not? And, and, and there uh-huh. you go. And, and there you go. The uh, now now what's, what's going, going on in your shop? What's going on in my shop? I just finished a project. I'm in. I'm in that moment where where you 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 just had that 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 moment of, of triumph. Um, this past Saturday, Rhonda and I actually put finish. On the queen size bed that I built, uh, the storage. Are you taking credit for what she did? Didn't Rhonda put the finish on? She put. I said she put the finish on it. I didn't say. I said I built. She put the finish on it. Okay. Oh, okay. So just remember that. So what happened was, you know, we we actually got to the point where it was complete, which was which was you know very odd for a project (laughs) coming out of my shop because there's always that moment where you get like the 97 percent and you're like, yeah, get to those last three percent. You're four projects down the line. So it was good to actually see something actually get to that state of completion where we're done with it. And I got to tell you, the bed looks really nice. Real simple shaker style headboard, storage. You know, in Florida, there's no basement. They're called indoor swimming pools. So, you know, actually having some storage in the house to put some additional things, to store things, worked out really good. So I'm really, really excited about this. Um, You know, now I can move on to the next project, which is my niece. 16. I know she doesn't listen to the podcast. Maybe she should start. But <laughs> oh, she will. Oh, she will. Oh, she will now. Um, but I've got to get that. Uh, I've got to get that uh, hope chest done for her. So uh, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be the next big project moving through the shop. So no. Um, can I go back our, to bed for a second? Our only no. listener, Tom, will tell her. Yeah, my my mom will tell my niece. So it'll be yeah. perfect. So right. that's, um, that's the best part about it. Yeah. Yes, sir. When we last yeah. spoke of the bed, you were going to finish it in place in the room, and it was yes, we did the blog. I saw you did that. How did it work out? It worked out actually surprisingly well. Um, the beauty about it was we were able to tape off the floor, uh, and we used a water-based finish. Um, and it was an all-in-one, so it had a water-based uh, polyacrylic kind of thing with uh, with stain in it, and it worked out well. And what I did was uh, I took the – we had those little drawers they'd pull out that serve as nightstands. Um, mm. And I pulled those out, and I put two or three coats of, um, of, of the uh, just a clear polyacrylic on them and sanded down between and um, because I just wanted to make sure I floated on really nice out here in the shop, and I had better control over it. Um, and I sanded okay, between so the coats. On the bed, did you well. stand in between coats? Um, no, we only put one coat on it. It actually did a great job. It covered very well. So I was I was pleased as punch. I couldn't have been any happier. It couldn't have been any better. I was ecstatic. I cried. Excellent. I laughed. It was better than cats. It was outstanding. Both were able to no. move on. Stop, yeah, why don't we? Stop. 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 Okay. Please. Now I can sleep. I like that you wrote that in the notes. Tom can now sleep. This is this is good stuff. Um. So it has been a while since we recorded, hasn't it, guys? It has. A couple weeks. Yeah, a few weeks. Okay. And there's this big event that somebody ran called Get Woodworking Week. Yeah. Who ran that? I don't know. Whoever the guy was, he's a moron. I'm telling you, he's a moron. He's a full-on moron. Um, but well, anyway, tell us you know, about over, the moron. Yeah, tell us about the 
moron. Tell us about the moron and his full-on efforts. Um, get one working week for those of you who know or don't or who care or don't um, is an effort to get people off the sidelines and out of their shops uh, to, to give woodworking a try. Maybe it's been a long time since you've done it. Maybe you've never done it in the past and you wanted to give it a go. Um, so the idea is to get woodworkers to encourage people to come to their shops or maybe talk about it you know, with, with, a, with a group of kids, things like that. So um, there were a few uh, blog posts that came out. Um, Shannon Rogers, uh, who just celebrated his birthday yesterday, by, by golly, um, did a, a piece that actually came out of Wood Magazine, a really simple, bent, really cool-looking bent lamination clock. Um, just talked about how simple it was, just to get a small project like that under your belt, something you could you could tackle, uh, you can knock out in a weekend, you know, with just a limited t uh, set of tools. That really looks cool. So that was kind of a, that was one of those inspirational kind of you know you can do this kind of posts. And then our friend uh, Todd Clippinger uh, with the American Craftsman Workshop, um, he really had a nice philosophical piece about getting out there in the shop and really just the fact that it takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of guts. You know, you got to go out there, you got to do it, just like anything else. You want to learn to play guitar, you want to learn how to drive a car, you want to learn how to do anything. It just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of effort, and you could be doing anything you want to. It's just a really nice, uh, really nice piece. Uh, just uh, just really look good, you know, to, to see that kind of effort. We had all kinds of articles come in. Over at my blog, I've got the, I've got the uh, links to all of them, just some great, you know, just some great articles came in. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Father Tom uh, uh, did a uh, uh, did and Monk Works. He did something on a little. Okay. He made a plane out of plywood, which was wild. Um, you know, so he made this little uh, uh, little uh, block plane out of plywood, which was really cool. Um, so you know, we had we had an opportunity to try out some really new things and you know get some people involved. So I was I was happy to see the effort. You know, next year we'll just do it again. We'll see if we get more folks involved. Now, what? How many years has it been now, Tom? Is this the third it's year? It's been four. This is the fourth. Okay. Wow. Time flies. So, so I mean, it was you know it, again you know the story is that all all good stories that started off at a bar late at night and everybody's drunk and, uh, and angry, and I believe. Well, it wasn't angry. It was it was kind of puzzled, you know. The discussion. Well, I, I, team, I was there. I was at that table, Tom. I think there was a little bit of uh, there was a, frustration there was with the powers that be. Yeah, but it was it was kind of like you know why is woodworking dying? What are we going to do to save the craft? And it was a lot of you know people just sitting around just griping about you know how it's going away and that's it. It's going to be gone. And we just said, look, we got to do something. So this is my humble effort, hopefully to. Uh, you know, hopefully to get things going, and uh, you know, maybe get some more folks out there. And you know, uh, you know, hey, if we if we got two, three, four people around the country out to a shop, hey, that's four, you know, two, three, four people who never would have done it before. So I'm Absolutely. just happy about that. So you know, I mean, if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it one thing at a time. All right. All, All right. right. Well, I'm gonna bring us back to Todd Clippinger's American Craftsman Workshop blog, because uh, mm -hmm. he was talking about um, the makers. By the Handmade Movement, and it's a it's a show that's coming out on Vimeo. And I apologize, as of February 9th, it was coming out. It may have come out already. I haven't checked this since I put this in the show notes. But um, it's going to be a show about people who make things by hand of all of all ways to do it. So uh, Todd's yeah. fairly discerning, and I trust his eye if he says it's going to be an inch. Yeah, I mean, on, on his. And they get to the makers of Vimeo and watch their series. Um, and then, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, you we kind, of, kind of cut out there think. for a second. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it was then, just you. Okay. Carly's laughing at us because of our technical difficulties. This is great. <laughs> our, our guest is going to have so much fun when she comes on. We're going to be poking fun at her the entire time. It's gonna <laughs> She's going to love every single minute of it. This is not a good at an Ellen show, is it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so the uh, continue, yes. Yeah, okay. Shannon had a post on uh, on February fifth called "What if your shop were much bigger?" And I found it really interesting because Shannon's shop is the same as mine. They're both microscopic, and um, we approach our shops a bit differently, as many of you may imagine. But he was just talking about what he would do with a big shop, and it was a nice discussion around shop size and how you make the most of it and you grow into anything. So that was a very good post on Renaissance Woodworker. And then finally, um, Dave Nofts on January 30th had a post about uh, called The Time Machine, and he just went back and reflected on a curved front de desk he just finished up. And he talks about how, having spent months making it, that each different component has different memories and 
tied to it about what was going on at the time and what he was doing and how it was made. And it was just a very reflective post about the significance and the emotional tie you get to a piece as you reflect back on it. And frankly, I could read Dave's posts all days. I think he should re just write a philosophy book about woodworking. You know, there are some people who can do that. Obviously yeah. not me, but, you know, there are some people who can do that. And they really, you know, they, they, they delve deep, deeply into the emotion that goes along with it, with woodwork. So, and, uh, you know, we, we've talked about some really incredibly meaningful pieces over the years that, uh, you know, for instance, Mark building the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, little internment box for his uh, uncle mm. uh, recently, and uh, you know, just the uh, Mark Spagnuolo, and just you know, the the you know, the emotion that went into that. That really, you know, you, you start to find out, you know, what these pieces mean to people. So it's so it, it's really really a big deal. Um, Absolutely. Hey, what's yeah. so what's going on? In the, goings on in the MW? Dan has a blog, and it's about time. Dan Westfall. <laughs> Dan Westfall. That's right. Um, so so tell us all about his blog. Well, his blog is at Westfall Woodcraft, uh, W E S T F A L L Woodcraft dot com, and he's got I don't know three or four posts now. I hope that he's not just um, going gangbusters with the exuberance of starting a blog and doesn't fade out. Dad's got to pace himself a little bit and keep the content up. But they're they're interesting posts about how the woodworking fits into his life and what he does and doesn't do in woodworking, and I enjoy that because I'm not. I'm not a tremendous fan of a, I just made this and here's exactly how I did it and follow these steps. And while a lot of my posts talk about what I made, I try to be vague in terms of the exact actual steps. And Dan's talking more about the way they f that woodworking falls into his life than specifically making many things. Um, and I thought that was cool. And just the fact that, you know, he he's doing more in the community and starting a blog I thought was absolutely worth mentioning. Nice. Well, you know, I mean, hey, more voices out there, more people getting involved. This is the way it's going to work. I mean, we're going to we're going to find more people who are going to appeal to more folks, and before you know it, we're going to have a lot more people like our guest. <gasps> and, of our guest. and who would our guest be, Tom? Speaking, Why don't you introduce speaking about our guest, I'd love to introduce you all to Carly Eisenberg. You know, where where we think we're famous, right, Chris yeah. Diami? You know, we we uh, think we're uh, famous. This lady was on a show hosted by Ellen DeGeneres. I mean, <laughs> come on, we're idiots. We're like small, like microscopic. This lady is like up there in the, in the upper stratosphere. One of these days, we hope to get there to that level. Carly, how you doing? I am fantastic. How are you? Oh, just lovely. Thank you for asking. You know, it's good for you to see, you know, the people are way up on Mount Olympus to ask the small people how they're doing. <laughs> well, Carly, welcome to the Modern Woodworkers Association. Let, let's talk a little bit about the show. The show. Well, well I mean, what's the experience like? How'd you get in? Well, come on, come on, spill uh, the beans. Well, it all started about a year ago. Um, I got an email from a production company, or I think it was actually like a talent search type of company, saying that they were doing a furniture show and they wanted me to be on it. And I was like, hey, no, I know that's a scam. <laughs> 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 but I, I figured out that it wasn't, and I went through the process. And, you know, it was like six months later, they're flying me out to L.A., and I'm, you know, get to meet Ellen, and I'm in the midst of five other fantastic designers. Well, Katie, I knew I've been in the midst of her before, but she won, so she's absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, she's proven it. Let's well, just say that. <laughs> well, let's talk about before you got that uh, email from the talent search company. Um, having watched the show and talked, you talked, I think it was mentioned that you went to RISD, yeah. um, the Rhode Island School of Design, for people who don't know RISD. Um, right, that's what RISD stands for? Okay. Um, but talk about how you got into design at all. And if I, having read your bio, you were interior design, then got into furniture design, is that right? It, it kind of all kept cycling back in on each other. Um, I actually was at RISD my freshman year and then transferred. But my freshman year when I was 18 was the first time I got, really got introduced to furniture and to woodworking. And okay. a little kid's bent lamination chair, which when you've never done working woodworking for, is kind of stupid to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, you all have to start so, somewhere, you know? I mean, come on. Uh, Multi-banded bent lamb is not the place to start. <laughs> Probably not a good start. I start from that. Um, 
but so after my freshman year, I actually transferred to Miami of Ohio and went into interior design. But they had a fantastic uh, woodworking shop in the basement, and I just kind of went straight down there and never left. And so it's been almost 10 years that I've been woodworking, and it's about a year and a half that I've been metalworking. Is that all? Yeah. Because now, mo am I right that the majority of what you do outside of the show, what you're doing on your own, is mostly metalworking these it days? Is, and the time of, at the time of the show, I had been blacksmithing for about nine or ten months. Oh wow! Uh, so I really had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> I just started making stuff up. Well, you know, Carly, it's there's an old expression bad. called "fake it till you make it." So, <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a lot to be said for not knowing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You show the confidence, you can actually do it. So I'm living proof, and so is the Army. So. <laughs> what about Chris? Well, yeah, we, he, he's already known it all. Don't worry about uh, it. Oh, yeah. That's right. right. <laughs> so, okay, so now you're in this – now, okay, now now let's get to the nitty-gritty, okay? So you, you've been doing this stuff. Now you are you got nine months at the Forge. you got about ten years working woodworking. You, you get the call, you go out, you do the audition, they love you, they, they, they think you're, you're, you're totally marvelous, you're kicking butt all over the place. So now, what's it like? I mean, you know, obviously, you know, you get a chance, you know, to work with a designer. Normally, you kind of take your time when you're working on a piece, you know, you make sure you plan everything out, but now you're working under a time pressure and there's a judge at the end. Right, well, how does that change your dynamic? Um, it was all really rushed. I mean, the first project, I think we had 48 hours to design and build and put finish on and everything. It was slightly absurd, um, but I took the advantage of not actually knowing really what I was doing in the forge, quote unquote. Um, <laughs> Again, again, you're gonna have to have this, you know, like banged out in letters, you know, may fake it till you make it, you know. <laughs> but I had never worked with tubing before, so I thought the best, you know, way to go about it was to just start hitting it until it looked pretty. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, that's exactly what my wife told me after we started dating. That's a perfect plan. <laughs> she just hit me until I started looking pretty. It was great. <laughs> There's a better way to make it look pretty. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> challenge one, I really honestly didn't make a design. I just okay. twisted up some steel, and then I was like, I need to make some wood top for it. So I, you know, laminated that up and cut it out into some organic shape. And hey, they liked it, so. <laughs> <laughs> you moved on. I mean. <laughs> it was pretty. I've actually gotten orders for that table. Oh, uh... <laughs> Isn't that the way it always works? Hey, it's organic. Yeah, seriously. I wonder if Jackson Pollock was actually just cleaning his paintbrushes and he just <laughs> they're all masterpieces. It makes you wonder sometimes, doesn't it? He actually has um, cigarette ashes in some of the paintings just because he was chain smoking. Yeah, lean over, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so so now you're out there, you're you're you're, you're banging the crap out of the tubing, you're laminating up the top, you know, you got all this stuff going on. I mean, now you gotta get judged. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, you know, obviously, you know, if you're going to build a piece for the commission, the the person who's buying it is obviously going to judge. You know, they're going to say, okay, you know, here's my money, or you really blew the design. But then you're going to get judged on TV in front of this live, you know, like in front of this enormous TV audience. But I mean, what's going through your head at that point? I mean, I thought I was slightly prepared because uh, critiques at RISD are pretty harsh. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Nothing like the judging on that show. I How? just I tried so hard to please them with every single challenge, and I just I was like I I wasn't going home for most of it, but I couldn't get in the top two for the life of me. Oh, they would not let me there. <laughs> how how was the judging in person versus the edited version we all saw? Well, judging ran anywhere from about 15 minutes to a half an hour, and they edited it down to about 45 seconds. Okay. So, yeah. um... Does that mean it was a little bit more well-rounded than what was shown, or...? It depends. Some of them were just, like, I remember I was going through it, and then we actually got to watch other contestants get judged, 
and we're sitting there going, what are they saying? Like, what? No, you were so wrong. <laughs> like, what is going on? <laughs> but, um, for example, the, what was it? My, the, my elimination couch. The, the lovely couch that I think everyone agrees was the nicest couch. Yeah. The, the way they edited it made it look like they hated my couch. Made it look like it was an awful couch and nothing was right. The funny thing was, that was about the only negative things they said of the 20-minute critique. <laughs> the rest of it, oh, wow. they loved it. They thought that the shape was wonderful. They thought that that little cocoon was perfect and it was great proportions and all this kind of stuff. And then chop, 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 negatives. So, I mean... Yeah, so well, you wait, wait, wait till you hear it? what... Wait till you hear what gets published from this recording when Chris is done. <laughs> oh, that's right. I, I take everything but the bad out, so it's oh, gone. <laughs> no. Um. So, so did you find that a lot? I mean, was there a lot of things that that happened through that? I mean, I, I mean, I can imagine you're spending so much time doing that that, you know, they're really trying to go through and cut the entertaining parts of it out. Um, right. You know, I mean, the show, so. Jeff and I are always entertaining, so that was, that must have been hard for them to edit down. Um, <laughs> they wanted to take it all, of course. I really, really wish they had put in. It was pretty fantastic. I don't know if any of the listeners remember or watch this, but there uh, was a designer, Leslie, who was really mm -hmm. fighting with her carpenter, David, and uh, there was one point where the camera was facing into the shop filming them, and so Jeff and I like started dance behind them, <laughs> 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 just making fools out of ourselves. And of course they cut that, but that would have been hilarious. Of course it would have. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not just it's not just what you do or what you say; it's how you interact with it with the camera, and that that really is a big part of it. And that's you know, I mean, you, you obviously, I, I don't know, Diami, is this going to be an audio only, or is this going to be a video podcast? But 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 Carly, you're, you're like you're like animated, which is great, you know, not like crazy animated like me, but you're <laughs> animated, which is great. But obviously, I can see that's part of the allure of bringing you onto television, not just because you're talented with what you can build, but also the fact you play well um, on the camera. You're cutting yes. out. I am? cutting out, yes. He wasn't cutting right. out to me. Yeah, it's just you, Chris. Fail. Yeah. Um. And there I was paying Carly a compliment. We'll see, I gotta we'll see how it does the... <laughs> I just got a feeling when lines, okay, will you? <laughs> now, the so, but anyway, I mean, Carly, you know, obviously, you know, it's more than just it's more than just you know what you can do with your hands. It's how you play with the camera, how to interact with the camera, how you interact with the with the designer. I mean, there's a lot to be said about the presence. I mean, do you think that was one of the real deciding factors to getting you up onto the show? Honestly, it might have been. I mean, I'm I'm goofy. I'm blunt. I'm probably one of the only ones who actually spoke my honest opinion about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's who I am. I mean, I'm not going to keep things in for the most part. But, you know, being a five foot two little tiny 26 year old female blacksmith doesn't hurt either. No. <laughs> I'm just saying. Right. There you go. I mean, but it must really set you apart from all the five foot six female. Absolutely. Blacksmiths. I mean, yeah, I mean five foot ten. We know about it. Yeah. We know. We know all those five foot six blacksmiths get together. They go out to drink. They talk about the shorter ones. I'm telling you, it happens all every weekend. That's what happens. <laughs> my favorite thing before the show, when they were like prepping up my forge area, which you know was in the alley beside the wood shop um, in Los Angeles. Okay. In, Los Angeles, in August. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, they called me and asked me what height I wanted my anvil at, and I told them, and they called me back. They're like, "You want us to cut five inches off the stand?" I'm like, <laughs> yes. "I am very little. I don't think you understand how <laughs> tiny I am." Can we like, just build a five foot inch tall platform for me to hop up on? Or there, um, I don't know. Again, if I don't remember what they showed this, but there was a point where I actually had to stand on one of the anvils that I put on the ground in order to reach something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the magic of this TV, you know, this, this, is, the, this is the best part. Now you're, now you're in my world. This is, this is just great. Oh, I am, I'm as rough as it comes, honestly. I'm just, 
I mean, I'm, again, woodworker for 10 years. I'm a big part of the Furniture Society, which is a bunch of old male woodworkers, and, you know, they're yeah. my family. I'm, I'm gruff. They're a very gruff <laughs> group. A wonderful, amazing group, but... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, my um, my boyfriend calls me an old man. <laughs> what does that say about him? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Tyler. You heard it from him. <laughs> See, Diami's already thrown him under the bus. This is not good. This is definitely not good. There's going to be a fight later. Today. I'll tell exactly what I'm telling you. This is the kind of stuff that makes me worry. So, 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 Carly. You know, obviously now you've gotten you know a little bit of national exposure. We this much national exposure. Just a, just a teeny tiny bit of national exposure. What are your big plans from here? I mean, is this like is this like you see like the doors opening? You know, the the, the hear the hear the harps playing, or the, the the clouds billowing everywhere, and and you're going to come out now, and you're going to be like, I don't know, like you know, you see opportunities for you to be like on HGTV and and PBS and all that other stuff. I mean, what do you think? Well, we are still in the very 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 beginning stages of figuring this out, but there is a very large chance that there will be a small group of, or a small film crew flying from LA to do a sizzle reel to pitch to networks for my own show. Nice. Cool. Cool. Yeah, so basically what the show, fingers crossed, if it goes through, you know, hey, everybody listening, just start calling in networks saying you want to see me. It'll help. <laughs> um, but the show basically would be partially what's happened after the show. Um, before the show, I was in a 150-square-foot shop that was a lean-to on the side of an old grist mill. Yeah, I'm classy. Um, I love it. <laughs> I mean, did Abraham Lincoln split the rails for this place? I mean, what, what's going on? I mean, um, so, But after the show, I moved to Asheville and moved into a big co-op which is basically what this would be about of you know my growth and then th this co-op itself we're going to we're going to pitch it to different networks but I'm saying now if any network wants us it's going to be spike because we are not clean people <laughs> as in like with your language correct uh, grease language whatever you want to call it uh, wunderbar okay wunderbar you probably fit in beautifully in PBS. It'll be great. If, if you've ever seen Roy Underhill, you'll know exactly what we're getting at because he spills blood everywhere. <laughs> um, you know, I, Carly, I, I'm going to have to ask you the obvious question. Yep. You know, and duh, you know, duh. 26 year old female, not typically, like you said, fitting the mold of the woodworker that we picture in our heads when people yep. think they're going to turn on the TV, they're going to see a woodworking show. What's been people's reaction to what you do? Honestly, I've always gotten a really good reaction out of the people. Um, I during the In your long 26-year life. <laughs> um, hey, I've been woodworking for almost 10 Since years you're 16. now. That's, that's I can do the math. I'm an English life. major. <laughs> um, but, no, I joined the Furniture Society when I was 20, and I was, I was the baby. They literally... Um, Alf Sharp, who was was the president at the time or president right after then, they have adopted me into their family. Like I am their child. <laughs> you know, it I am I am definitely the baby, but everybody's really cool and really supportive and they get a kick out of it. And I I know what I'm doing for the most part. Well, you know what you're doing you as much it. as they do. And they fake just fake it till you make it. <laughs> I actually I don't know if this is going to be a video thing, but even if it, I don't want to drag it all the way over here, but the last no, big not. woodworking piece that I did was a 16 or 17th century inspired uh, French puzzle cabinet. Oh, wow. What am yeah. I doing wrong? Like, hey, Chris, it, it will be. It will be? Yeah. It's all actually, right. it's, 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 it's live right now. Oh, I know, well, I'm just... hold on two seconds. You guys keep talking. Yeah. Yes, we'll, we'll continue. Are you are you saying it's not Chris? Because I'm the one actually publishing this. Because your laptop's at home. Uh, uh yeah, but it, it won't go on to the uh, the normal podcast. Is still audio. Oh yeah, but. Because I'm cool like this, and this was sitting in my closet. Here you go. Yeah, gonna drag it. <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da!
That's cool. Yeah, we, cool. we we see the problem is there's not enough show and tell <laughs> on our <laughs> podcast. Audio podcasts tend to lack show and tell. What can I tell you? <laughs> Look, I'm holding a piece of wood. I'm a woodworker. Check it out. Look at the beautiful piece I built. And we have to show it in the notes, okay? But but again, I mean, you know, that I mean, that that's that's really cool. I mean, that people have accepted you in. And, you know, it, this is. I mean, this is. This is big stuff. I mean, you know, this is exciting stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, you know, in, in in get woodworking weeks in years past, I've always you know bemoaned the fact that a lot of women were steered away from woodworking, who probably had some incredible talent, but you know, home ec is the girls' class. You take that yeah. shop is the boys' class, and it's it's great to see somebody working what they work in well. Yeah, I found that women have a lot. Um, don't take this offensively. That's okay. I, I, I don't. I don't get offended easy. A lot better attention to detail, and they're more patient. Really? So, when it comes to Definitely. woodworking, not oh, everything. <laughs> no, everything. Nothing I, not everything. Yeah, I think we're all married. I think we can all agree with that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But more, closer attention to detail. How about that? <laughs> I agree. I, you know, I I agree. I mean, you know, it, it's 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 the it's the kind of thing that's important. It's called for in any craft. I mean, you know, it's that, that especially when you get down to the fine, I and mean, you know, I mean, it, it, this isn't a new discovery that you're bringing up. I mean, you know, during World War II, I know women were brought into you know uh, uh, setting the uh, the fine gears for the Norden bomb sites, finely meshed mechanical because they had the better dexterity, had the better eye for the for the way that things went together. Yeah. So this isn't like a brand new concept. I mean, this is something that's actually been out there known for for decades, centuries. That this kind of this kind of uh, skill exists. So this is good. I mean, I'm just I'm just glad to see that you know, in 2015, nobody's saying, well, this isn't your thing. I'm glad to see you're doing it because I see the stuff you build. It's awesome. Yeah, it is absolutely fantastic. And you're gonna turn around and slap me. It looks like that's what's gonna happen here in a minute. <laughs> You'll have to give Chris a tour when he's up in the area so we can... Uh, there you go. Can show and I actually, the, the co-op I'm in now is, it's great because I have my metal shop. Uh, one of the guys in there has a wood shop so I can go over there and do my woodworking, hop over, do some glass blowing. It's like my own little heaven. That's very cool. No. Glass blowing too? Oh, I've been doing glass blowing since I was, yeah, 18. It's it's my impression that you're not allowed to go to RISD if you don't do glass blowing. Is that correct? Yeah, you gotta dabble. <sighs> no, glass blowing was my major my freshman year. Okay. But no. what, what, what am I doing wrong? What, why don't I have a forge outside in the back? Why don't I have a forge out there? So, Thomas, because so we both went to Eng we both majored you know. in English, Tom. That was oh, our, sorry. our mistake. <laughs> Ask you about you, you know you said you're in you're in Asheville now and you know obviously you know I I don't know that all the listeners you know kind of know the Asheville area but you know Asheville's just, just this huge just area for you know art and and just this upcoming t tell us about how you got to Asheville um, and and kind of your experience and what you've learned there. Um, so I was actually in Boone, which is only two hours up the mountain. And yep. it there's a small artist community there, but it wasn't thriving like Asheville is. There's a place in Asheville called the River Arts District, which I'm only, my shop's only a mile outside of that, but just yeah. hundreds and hundreds of extremely talented artists, and everybody's up for a collaboration. Everybody's up to help everyone else. So it seemed like the place I really needed to be. Right. So once I got here, I've been here for six months now. I literally moved here two weeks after I got back from filming. Um, wow. But it's it is definitely a one of a kind place. It is filled with the best food <laughs> and the best art on the face of the planet. Well, not the planet. Maybe North Carolina, because no, there's <laughs> um, <laughs> those people at Paris, the Louvre. You know, they they, they tend to disagree <laughs> with everything. So that's what I'm but saying. They don't count. Um, no, but it is it is absolutely fantastic. It's beautiful. I actually posted up on Twitter today my view from my the back of my shop. And it yeah. really, we're above the river, and it drops down straight 
to the French Broad, looks over the skyline of Asheville, behind it is the mountains. It's just, it's a phenomenal place to be. Sure. Nice. Yeah, it's it's definitely beautiful up there. So, no, it's great. So, Carly, I have like twelve very very talented artists just in my co-op. So, see, that's right. the best part. You know, it's like you can you can collaborate. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's frankly on some level that's why we do this because we all have day jobs and work alone in our shops, and I think that community around any type of art, it just it fosters you and it it motivates you and it keeps you going, and to work with that day in and day out has to be wonderful. Or distracting. Well, that that's true, but because the bell rings and the beer comes out just... at four, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm done. So, Carly, you got all your work done early in the day, I see. Yeah. And then by four o'clock, it's all over. Absolutely. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, good. A lady with her priorities in order. Carly, we're we're getting close to the end here. I've got one last question. Go for it. No, no, I have a last question. You don't know okay. what the last question is, Tom. Well, I've got a last question. Okay. Tell what, what do you want to tell our view? What do you want to tell our viewers? God, nobody can see an audio podcast. What do you want to tell our listeners? I mean, what, what what's the one word of advice? Twenty six year old, five foot two blacksmith, woodworking, sixteen years. I mean, you you picked up a hammer when you were like two years old, and you're banging it. You're you're putting together the Mona Lisa in wood scraps. What 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 do you want to tell? What do you want to tell our folks? Um. Well, if you're really old, it's never too late. If you've got kids who seem like they're interested, foster it. Don't try to make them a doctor. It doesn't work. Just let them be an artist. Let them build stuff. And if you're my age, I'm sorry you're not going to pay the bills. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just saying. I you was on be, TV and I still can't pay the bills. You, you, you don't seem to be living under, under an overpass, though. That's a good thing, though, isn't it? Uh, I'm scraping by. There we go. You see, you're not living under an overpass. This is, <laughs> you see, it's a step up right there. I got a roof. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Deami, go right ahead. What's your last right. question? Now, Carly, I, uh, unbeknownst to my two co-hosts here, I emailed you a picture earlier. Yeah. Now, that's a picture of, of Chris, who is not showing video on this because he didn't bring his camera with him. Now, tell me, is Chris a complete... Oh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rephrase this. Tim is a clone of Chris. This is... <laughs> I'm not you saying You agree? I complete, you completely cut out and not hear a word you just said. <laughs> Basically, Carly... Okay. No, no, Chris, stop, 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 stop. Okay, okay. Tim, your, your fellow contestant, uh -huh. is a doppelganger for Chris. A little bit. They were, they were for, twins separated at birth, correct? I mean, but that yeah. also means that you're a twin with George Michael. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta have faith. <laughs> I, I actually That's have a funny. video clip of Tim singing "God Have Faith." How funny! <laughs> well, Chris, yeah, why don't you I actually got two comments? Yeah. I never even saw the the show at the time, and uh, yeah. Do what, Diami? I, I was going to ask you to relay the the tale of your wife's friend. Well, yeah, you'd said something about it, and then like two days later, my wife goes to school. She's a school teacher, and. And one of the girls she teaches with came up and said, "Does your husband have like a really close relative that's on the Ellen Show?" <laughs> said, no. So. Yeah, honestly, when you first sent me the picture, I looked at it and I didn't look at him. I was like, "Why is there a steel box in zebra wood?" <laughs> <laughs> it's actually it's an urn. Okay, that makes it's more an urn. sense. Yeah. It makes more sense now. Yes, it yeah. does. We're still trying to make sense of Chris, but that's okay. So is everybody <laughs> else. Carly, it couldn't have been any more fun having you on tonight. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on. Now that you know, now we have a real celebrity on. I mean, I feel like somehow we've been vindicated. I still <laughs> don't. You know, I'm like, I, I still am just a dirty woodworker blacksmith. I'm not a celebrity. <laughs> It's okay, we'll cut five inches off your anvil stand. Don't worry about it. Hey, you come down, we'll cut five inches off. No pro no questions asked, okay? Now, Carly, besides um, watching uh, Ellen's Design Build and the future shows you're going to have, 
where can our listeners and viewers find out more about you? Um, I've got Twitter. Uh, it's my handle is Carly underscore I M F C A R L E Y underscore I M F. On Facebook, you can look up Iron Mountain Forge, and then there's CarlyEisenberg.com. So you got three ways to follow me. Excellent. Fo fo folks should follow you everywhere. Yes. Yeah, those just views are just what you want to see on a snowy afternoon. Yeah, because you got a big feature in this stuff, I'm telling you. All right, so, Carly, you're done. You can stay right there. You can wait. You can go. You're free to go if you want to. Up However to you want to handle it. We thank just have you a for coming out. We're gonna, we're gonna By the way, thank you for coming out. We're, we're, we're going to wrap up thank things. Hey, thank Tom, you, we go back it. under the overpass. What? Who's on next week or in two weeks? Oh, in two weeks, uh, Chad Stanton of Wood Shopping Time. Now with the popular woodworking, I can do that video series. And I've heard Chad's going to bring his hair. Awesome. Awesome. Now, there's another thing we have going on, our community conversation. There's a voicemail that came in. Can you believe it? Wow. From James Coleman. Do you want me to read it or do you want me to uh, I think we should make Chris do it. it. Can I do it? Can I no, do it in my ahead. voice? Go ahead, Can Tom. Go voice? ahead, Tom. Do I would it. like to know the difference between polyurethane and lacquer. I kind of know poly takes a good day to dry between coats, and I've been told lacquer takes about 30 minutes. I've never tried lacquer before. Is there a benefit that I should know about? And a cabinet door and cabinet boxes, should I have been using lacquer all these years? Wow, James, excellent question. Okay, tell you a little thing, a little history, a little, little thing about finishes. There are a couple different kinds, okay? Um, the lacquer uh, that we're normally talk about is is nitrocellulose lacquer, right? Sure. Who's with me here? Right. You guys are all falling asleep on me. Okay. Right. Lacquer right. is nitrocellulose right. lacquer. And what happens is it's it's actually stuff that's from cotton, okay? It's actually nitrocellulose. And what happens is it's 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 um it dissolved the lacquer thinner. And what happens is you spray that stuff on, the lacquer thinner evaporates. You can't brush on lacquer, okay? The brush would stick, okay? You couldn't brush on it. There's a brushing lacquer, but it's heavily modified stuff. When you shoot on lacquer, it does dry very quickly. You get a couple of problems sometimes. You can get a little orange peel. That's because it's spitting out too much liquid. Or you get, a, or you get blushing if it's a really humid day, like down here in Tampa Bay. During the summer, it's really difficult to spray lacquer. The good thing about lacquer is it dries like 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 nobody's business. So you can sand that stuff out and then shoot it again. You, know, you kind of build up like multiple uh, multiple uh, uh, layers coats. of it. coats, layers of it. So you're out there building this stuff up. You can do that. It stinks the holy heck. I'm telling you, this stuff is like ugh, bad. Polyurethane, okay, is a congealing kind of. And what it does is it kind of kind of congeals together as it as it cures. And it does say it's mostly oil. It's actually polymerized oil. So what happens is that does build a very tough, uh, it builds a very tough and a, a film coating. Now the difference between lacquer and uh, the major difference that you have to think about it between lacquer and poly is polyurethane creates a very abrasion resistant surface. In order to have the second coat stick to the first coat, you have to mechanically sand. You have to actually physically sand to get scratches in it so you can brush on another coat of poly to get it to adhere to the first one. When you shoot the lacquer on the next coat, what happens is the lacquer thinner that's in what you're spraying actually dissolves that lacquer that went down first. Kind of like what happens with, uh, shellac. with a shellac because the alcohol will dissolve the shellac and it actually bond with it. So in that case, uh, lacquer is actually repairable. Um, so if you do end up with some sort of damage to the to the finish, you can actually shoot on a coat of lacquer. It'll actually melt into the next layer, which is really great. Polyurethane's a lot more durable. Um, you know, it really does well on tabletops. But again, so is lacquer. I mean, they're they're both very good. Again, usually you you have to spray a lacquer to get a really good coat. So you could do that with an HVLP sprayer, or you can do it with a, a you know a, a for a small project, a little rattle can. And you could actually spray on lacquer. It works really so, well. So, Tom, it, great question. Is it? it would it be fair to question? Ooh, Carly. That. Yeah, go on, Carly. Um, what's your feeling about Danish oil versus poly? Oh, I don't like Danish, Danish oil. oil. You don't, don't like Danish oil? oil? No. 
Danish oil is kind of cool because it's kind of like the doppelganger. It's kind of like it's yeah. kind of like the mystery man. It kind of goes in between. What happens is it's 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 uh, it's um, their oil finishes kind of like boiled linseed oil. They kind of cure, but they really don't cure hard. And then there's polyurethanes, right. which cure very hard. If you mix the two of them together, what you do is you get Danish oil. So what happens is you can mix the two of them together, which kind of gives you a little bit of that hand rubbed look, but it does build up a coat. A, protect, a, a protection on it. It's nowhere near as thick as if you brush on. It's nowhere near as protective as if you brush on a straight coat of poly. And it sinks what, it so it shows the grain better because it's got the oil in it. The oil. Actually, that's what will happen if you if you just wipe on boiled linseed oil. You'll actually make the grain pop, um, especially figure in something like maple. Um, you know, you get a figured piece of maple, you rub on a, a coat of linseed oil. Now, usually what you'll do is if you want to protect that and keep that grain looking good, you'll brush on that linseed, the linseed oil, wipe it all off, and then let it cure a week at least. And then you can shoot it with lacquer, and it's going to really have that pop of grain. Or you can do kind of Danish oil. And then once that cures, if you want more protection on the top, like for a tabletop, you could put on another coat of polyurethane. I'm like, Shell the Answer Man. This is the, the Shell Answer Man. This is great. You've, uh, you've, you've, Expanded on this question much more than I ever would have guessed. Um, and Carly, I don't mean to insult your your finish, but I'm a shellac fan. I oh, would uh, shellac. It's yeah. Shellac. See, shellac is fun, but shellac, you, you know, you can actually get you know rings in shellac. You can get all kinds of stuff in shellac. You know, it's not as impervious as lacquer. Well, Tom, yeah. I don't like monkeys used by furniture. Oop oop. Now Jim Heavey, it's kind of funny because Jim Heavey, you know, from Wood Magazine, oh my God. he's going around in the woodworking shows. You talk to him about his finish. He always shoots. He always shoots lacquer because it's repairable. Right. So it's he, with, shoots, uh, he shoots it down. Something happens. Poof, he shoots it again. Todd Clippinger is a big fan of lacquer too. There we go. But you know, with lacquer, it can explode. You know, your lacquer thinner fumes are explosive. Yeah. So if you're going to put up a little booth, you're going to need a respirator. You're going to need uh, you're going to need an explosion-proof fan. You're going to have to filter all that stuff out. I, uh, there's a there's a woodworking school down here in Tampa called the Franklin Street School of Woodworking. They had to build a special spray booth, which you know, anti-explosion fans and filters and all this other stuff, so they could filter out all the lacquer they shoot in a day. So these students come in, they shoot lacquer, they're all suited up like they're shooting a car at Mako, and they shoot the lacquer on the projects. And what happens is it's great, it's beautiful finish, but it's got that problem with that explosive, and it's and it's toxic. So you got to be real careful, you know? All right. So wh what's the problem with, with lacquer, Carly? Uh, with, excuse me, with shellac, Carly? Well, shellac, oh, here we go. Shellac, oh, I see you're oh. tweeting, Dion. I mean, this is good. I like this. This is live tweeting. Now, shellac isn't oh. quite as tough as these other... Uh, what, what are you doing? Oh, shut up. Okay, enough of you. Are we done? I just wanted to hear why shellac wasn't any good. But I know your shellac. thoughts That's on shellac, Tom. What's wrong with shellac, but I oh, swear oh, by Danish oil, unless it has to be a tabletop, and then I do a varn oil. See, I would agree you with see. you on the tabletop, but I would assume you deal with the same humidity issues I get here. I can't get... Danish oil doesn't dry quick enough. If I'm going to use... Danish oil, I might as well use something something thicker and heavier that's going to dr dry with the same delayed time. I I've can get 12 coats of lacquer on in a day. Yeah, I use Danish oil in Naples, Florida. It doesn't get any more hot and humid than that. No. But, I mean, you have to be patient for beauty. Diami isn't patient. Diami's not patient. He went to that yesterday. He's going to New York. Tom, when have I ever finished any furniture yesterday? <laughs> you, 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 he's from New York. He can watch it. He can watch a two-hour movie in ninety minutes. That's where he's from. <laughs> See, that's uh, the beauty about the army. He's already, and then Chris, like you know, because he's from Atlanta, he could take like you know, he could take like six days and kind of look yeah, at it and go, oh, it's like, "Bless your heart." I love it. <laughs> Chris, we love you too, man. It's all good. And here's the Italian guy from New Jersey and Florida. <laughs> Talking finish. I gotta stop really, I really have to stop breathing the L lacquer fumes. Um, <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> all right, that just we should do more questions. Up. Oh yeah, okay, that just about wraps it up for the show. Um, if you're if you're missing us or our talk about finish already, you can subscribe to the show on iTunes. Just search for the Modern Woodworkers Association. And once you're subscribed, you'll be sure to never miss another exciting, thrilling, finish-filled episode. Um, and while you're on iTunes, 
please be sure to leave us a five-star rating, even if you don't believe we deserve it, especially if you don't believe we deserve it, because it helps our rank so others can more easily find us if they want. To. And if you want to find more about finishing, be sure to visit <laughs> modernwoodworkersassociation.com. Follow the MWA on Twitter at MWA on MWA on Facebook or circle circle Modern Woodworkers Association on Google Plus. While you're there, join the MWA Google Plus community for project sharing, discussion, and loads of woodworking banter. All right. So until next time, I am Chris Adkins of High Rock Woodworking. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at High Rock WW. I'm Diami Plotky of penultimatewoodshop.com, and I'm at Diami Plotky on Twitter. That's D-Y-A-M-I-P-L-O-T-K-E. And I'm resident shop monkey, but I wish it was as famous as Carly Eisenberg, Tom Iovino of Tom'sWorkbench.com, and at Tom'sWorkbench on Twitter. Until we see you again, because it's an audio podcast, we wish you all happy sawdust. Thanks for listening.